managing feedback. I think it's an incredibly important topic. Um, could you tell us, for those people who are tuning in for the first time who maybe haven't met you, give us a little bit about your background. Uh, well, thank you, um, Anel. I'm delighted to be here. So I am co-founder of Scene Change Creative Consultants, um, and we are a behavioural skills training company. So we're based in the UK, and we work globally with senior leaders and emerging talent across lots of different industries, basically to unlock potential and capabilities through experiential learning. Um, and my background originally is as an actor and a BBC television presenter and reporter. And I've been working in learning and development for over 15 years with a particular passion and specialism in inclusion and equality. Fantastic. Now, tell us a little bit about the journey of how you decided to put together managing feedback. What was the impetus? What, what were the steps? What process did you go through? Yeah, thank you for that. So basically, we're, we're working with a diversity of different industries. Hmm. And it doesn't really matter what industry you come from. We are often hearing from the people that we work with about the people challenges. I mean, that's that's what we deal with. And then there's we hear about the trends. And in the trends are very often about managing people towards continual success. Mm -hmm. And then every day we're hearing from managers and staff that they really struggle in giving and receiving feedback. So when we even hear that word feedback, it can often bring up those negative feelings that maybe might be based on past experiences. But sometimes, although people do mean well, uh, being offered feedback can often feel like we're under attack. So, for instance, if I could say, I might say to you later on, Anel, um, Anel, thank you so much. I, I really loved the interview today, but can I just give you some feedback? So yeah. as soon as as soon as we hear that, you know, what I said before about really loving the interview goes out the window and you probably think, oh, great. OK, here comes the negative stuff. And it yeah. doesn't always have to be like that. So absolutely. Um, with, with the organizations we work with, we hear more and more that uh, these organizations are moving away from this end of year appraisal um, mm -hmm. approach to more of a continuous feedback conversation, um, which really means that there's a real need to help people to feel more confident in delivering mm -hmm. feedback, receiving and even asking for it. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned in your training approach that you do something very special, very unique. Please expand a little bit on this. You know, we've mentioned it many times on your social media platforms, but I'd love for you to give our audience today a little bit of a sneak peek on what that approach is. Yeah, so basically, as, a, as professional actors, there are, are skills and competencies in the training that we go through, um, which really it helps us to get a really deep level of understanding about why people People behave in a certain way, why they do certain things. Um, and then when we couple this with behavioural psychology, it just allows us um, to not only share our own expertise, but also to show this through live demonstrations, um, particularly when it comes to how conversations can go, if we're getting emotional, um, if we're choosing particular words, uh, the use of language, some of that can really get in the way. So... It's also the same for lots of other areas of the training that we do from presentation and impact skills, uh, inclusion training, respectful behaviours, consultative selling. It's all about this learning by doing and, uh, and really sort of feeling it in our bodies and hearing the words and seeing the impact on other people. Um, and that, that really just comes down to skills practice, giving people some tools, um, putting them in a safe environment to try out different ways of doing things um, with a particular focus on what success could look like let's try it in a different way let's let's just pivot a bit um, and we're always focused on, on outcomes whether those are just small incremental changes um, on personal success or whether that's a, an organizational culture change I think what what I love about that approach is also being able to see 
a behavior reflected back at you without being in the situation. I think sometimes that's quite powerful. And also the other delegates with you being able to experience this and how they respond versus how you respond. So I think, you know, that dynamic, I think, could be exceptionally powerful. Now, Mary, when we are talking about feedback, you know, we what would you say is the most important thing that you need to consider when preparing for feedback? Where do you see people falling flat on the preparation? Well, we always survey our people. Um, we often use lots of tools to say, this is the workshop, you know, how do we feel about this particular top, top, topic? And we've been doing a lot of this recently. And there's, there's three things that actually come up. The first one is, which is always the sort of biggest chunk of what people say is time. Yeah. Um, another one that people talk about is mindset mm -hmm. and just, as what you have just said, it's preparing. So, you know, we, we know that people are incredibly busy. Uh, you know, people are being asked to do much more with a lot less resources. And sometimes it's very hard to find the time to invest in relationships at work, whether that's uh, getting to know your direct reports, whether that's um, thinking about being a more human centric leader, um, getting to know your manager because you think that they're always busy. But there's huge value in taking time to really get to know your people on a personal level. And in this way, we can build trust, we can build safety, and ultimately our feedback conversations can be a lot more positive. Um, and so that's about making making time for it. And then when it comes to the mindset, um, we, we really need to continue to try to change that narrative around feedback mm -hmm. that it actually can be extremely useful especially if it's given with empathy and it's received with empathy and it's got that kind of thoughts around growth mm. and and also when we're preparing it's it's really thinking about the growth of yourself and the other persons and getting mm. into that zone of collaboration um setting yourself some actions helping the other person to set actions and milestones mm and building confidence. Um, and of course, when we do that and we build these relationships, and we take the time, ultimately we save time in the long run because Absolutely. we're learning to pivot with you know different directions mm. when things aren't working. And I also think you're gonna pick up problems much sooner if you have those regular check-ins. And you said something very powerful, the mindset that feedback is fuel. Feedback is not you know, conflict, people also have the same perception around conflict. And I think those conversations really move you forward if they're done correctly. So that, that's a, a great way of looking at it. Exactly. Um, now, as a trainer, you know, it's, it's quite a unique opportunity talking to you because you specialize in presenting, managing feedback. What do you think are the common mistakes and misconceptions that you pick up consistently during this process? Um, well, one of them actually, it's, it's um, I don't know if this is the right answer to, the, to this question, but the, we often hear that um, people don't quite get in the zone of understanding that feed can often be difficult, not just for the person receiving it, but it's actually, it's difficult for the person who's giving the feedback. So um, the, your manager or you know, your boss person giving feedback is often worried or as worried and as anxious about delivering the message, um, particularly when it's what we call developmental feedback. People used to call it negative feedback, um, but we like to call it developmental feedback. So, so they often worry how that message is going to land, whether the other person is going to disagree with them, whether they're going to become emotional. Um, so it's, it's really important to, when you're thinking about going into your own review, end of year, mm. mid-year, whatever that might be, to really kind of respectfully try and position how you would like that feedback to given to be given to you. So, for example, you could maybe email your boss ahead of time and say, look, I'm really looking forward to this feedback session. And I'd really like to share some of my personal successes over the last few months. Um, and, and I'd also like to share some of my challenges. Or you could also influence the tone of how that feedback might be delivered by saying, um, I'm really interested in hearing what you thought I did on 
whatever topic it is that was effective and what I could do to be more effective because language is really important and it's 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 also about you know taking different perspectives your perspective and the perspective of the person giving feedback and receiving it you raise a very very interesting thing to ponder that it's also stressful and creates anxiety for the person delivering now on that note how do we reduce anxiety what's a great tip from your side on reducing anxiety in these high pressure discussions yeah um and we hear a lot about anxiety you know every single day we're hearing about that and more and more it's coming out into mm -hmm. into the workplace but the, the thing is our emotions are a very useful mechanism to help us to process the things that are important to us. Emotions can, of course, sometimes get the better of us. And yes, they do turn into anxiety. And then, of course, that limits our ability to function rationally. So we often say, and, and I do it myself, is, is having a mental rehearsal. It's a really good tool to use. So in the run up to a session, um, it's just useful to go into that conversation in your mind's eye, almost like a, running a little mini movie and seeing yourself as this calm and supportive person, seeing the other person as receptive and collaborative. Um, and this has been used for many years. Professional sports people use this, performers use it all the time. And it's really just preparing yourself for success. Um, and the thing is, when we reset the dial physically, uh, we can also start to think about practicing some breathing exercises. Again, I do this. Um, I'm also a trained physical intelligence coach, which means that I work with the body and the breath to help people to manage hormone spikes. Mm. So what you want to do is keep the cortisol low. So that's your stress mm. hormone, your testosterone high. Women have testosterone too. It's important mm. for women's bodies too. That's your confidence hormone. And then by just before some of these meetings, these challenging conversations, it's just stretching into an expansive mm. posture maybe for a couple of minutes before a meeting, deep breathing. So taking a breath in through your nose mm -hmm. and then controlling the out breath through your mouth to maybe a count of eight and doing mm -hmm. this three to five times, it just really helps to just re reset that dial so that you can start to function more rationally rather mm -hmm. than react emotionally. Because those stress hormones, you know, literally shut down the part of your brain that you need for this conversation. So that's such a great tip. Now, Mari, something that you are talking about quite a lot is growth mindset. And I can only assume that this is quite important in a feedback situation when, with, when you're giving and receiving to have that. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. So basically having a growth mindset just helps us to be flexible and that's what we need in every single part of our lives is to be flexible um we're dealing with people and people are fragile mm -hmm. and we need to be flexible to the other person in front of us and think mm -hmm. about um ourselves as having the ability to learn and to grow as well as the other person so even if you're giving the feedback, you're also learning and growing. Um, we all have the ability to change. And also we have the ability to frame failure or challenge in a different way and, and start to sort of look at that as what, what can I learn from this? And one of my favorite examples of this is from Thomas Edison. So when he was going through the very long challenging process of inventing the light bulb he said i have not failed i've only found a thousand ways that don't work um and that's really that essence of the growth mindset isn't it it's, it's the heart of innovation it's it's about empathy um and that can really help you have successful feedback conversations for you and the other person you know you make such an important point i think um, as a former executive assistant, we all have this perfectionistic way of looking at things. And, you know, I often say to them, think how Elon Musk must feel every time one of those SpaceX rockets explodes. But it doesn't slow him down. He doesn't lose any enthusiasm. He understands it's part of the process. So 
that's kind of baked into being a human being who's innovative and creative, which is what the world needs. So wonderful that that growth mindset is just reframing it as part of that process. I, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Mari, who would you say is the target audience for this program? Well, we work with senior leaders at the very top of organizations. Mm -hmm. We help them to embed a feedback culture um, mm -hmm. all the way through to new hires and they're perhaps having their very first review conversation with, with their manager. Um, and it's just it's exciting to help everybody, no matter what stage you are in your career. Mm -hmm. We all have a chance to self-reflect, to make mm -hmm. some different choices that not only benefit yourself, but also benefit your team. And then from starting to think that way, particularly about feedback, it also helps with your clients as well and you know the people that they are working with. So feedback, so, you know, it's real, it's a crucial uh, skill to have. Managing feedback is such an exciting program that you offer. Is there anything else in your catalog or your products and services that would be complementary, that would be a good match with this program? Um, where do I start? <laughs> so, yes, there, there's lots, of course. Um, what some of our clients do is maybe um, they, they would combine managing feedback with inclusive leadership training. Mm -hmm. Um, and then perhaps we move on to respectful behaviours workshops. Uh, these these really help um, clients, organisations to start to really look at their own values and their own culture and start to embed that in a day to day process. I mean, it, it's great having it all on the website about our culture yeah. and you know our inclus inclusion policies. <coughs> Excuse me, but we have to start living and breathing and understanding what does this mean to us as people within this organization um, and of course we know that every organization is unique they have their own challenges so everything that we do is you know conversations and uh, bespoke excuse me <coughs> <laughs> there we go i was about to say can i can i send you some room service <laughs> got my water thank you <laughs> Um, think if if I'm watching this session today and I think, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. This sounds incredible. What would be my next step? How do I contact you? How do I get involved? And how do I find out what you can offer the audience as scene change? Literally, it is just get in touch and we will have a conversation. Um, we're here to listen. Uh, you know, find out what the challenges are, offer some insights. And uh, we know that, you know, from working from with other clients, this is where we can start to really unpack um, what, what an organization wants to get to, you know, what's the outcome that we want to achieve. And of course, if we can't help, we will know someone who can. Um, and we also offer, you know, little taster sessions for people to kind of understand what it is that we do. If you had to leave us with one final thought about either managing feedback or leadership, what would you like to leave our audience with this afternoon? Okay, well, um, it would really be that no one's born knowing how to do this stuff. You know, it's, it's all learned behavior and it's learned through practice and it's learned through failing sometimes. And then when we fail, we can pick ourselves up and we can go did that direction work no let's just turn the compass ever so slightly um and also that getting ahead of feedback conversations is really important by asking for feedback yeah. um and and using that as an opportunity to grow um is also really important um and it's about being confident with that and using your language in in the right way that impacts people positively and and helps them towards success that is very very powerful and i think you know it's it's human that you won't necessarily always want to ask for feedback because it feels threatening but you make such a beautiful point that you can use that as fuel you can move forward with something that's actionable and you can show better results well mari it has 20 minutes has absolutely flown by I really, really appreciate your time today. And I know that this has been a very, very interesting conversation for our viewers. 
I will leave links in the comments to all the programs that we've referenced today. So if you're interested in getting in touch with Mori, please go and check out the website link and the information about managing feedback in the comment section. Thank you so much and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much, Anel. <laughs>